During my last military deployment, I had an awakening experience that changed my life. When our unit landed in Iraq, I thought good and bad were clearly defined. It wasn't until I uncovered my enemy's letters that I learned how wrong that perception was. I served in a detention facility in Iraq as a Navy hospital corpsman. One positive tuberculosis case made us test the entire compound, and while doing so, I noticed one detainee looking at my name tag. Then he gleefully revealed something he had been holding, an envelope with my family's name and address back in the United States. Terrified, I was certain he meant harm to my family. A few weeks later, rockets and mortars struck the compound where this man was housed. I entered this blown apart compound to confront the man, only I found him lying on the ground, badly wounded. Our eyes met and time stood still, like we were the only two people on earth. I had come to murder this adversary, but strangely our expressions softened. He took a couple of uncomfortable breaths and extended his hand. I thought, is he asking for my help, for forgiveness? As I stood frozen, he died right in front of me. My senses soon returned and I saw another man, maybe 30 feet away, struggling to help a badly wounded teenaged boy. He shook him and seemed to say in Arabic, listen to me, I'm talking to you. The father knelt caressing the boy's face. As I came into his son's view, the boy's eyes widened in abject terror. And then he died in his father's arms. Why would his teenage son be terrified of me, I wondered. I thought we were the good guys. After a moment of denial, the father let out an agonized, blood-curdling cry that I hoped I would never hear again. I instinctively put my hand on his heaving shoulder and without knowing who was behind him beyond just a sympathetic figure, he put his hand over mine and squeezed. At that moment, we were just two fathers. Curious about the humanity I saw in their eyes in their final moments, I asked my interpreter if I could learn more about the two men. On my last day in Iraq, he gave me their translated personal letters. I didn't know why I asked for them. I had promised myself that I wouldn't bring war home with me. Still, some cosmic reason told me to keep them. I completed my deployment soon after and returned home. Unwilling to talk about the deployment, I substituted therapy with maladaptive behaviors. I wasn't sleeping well, drank heavily, and abused prescription drugs. My paranoia made me booby trap my house for what I thought was an inevitable visit from militants seeking revenge. My marriage was shattered, reduced to a series of broken sentences. I contemplated suicide. Five years passed until I reluctantly read one of the letters that belonged to the deceased men. The men wrote about being internally displaced refugees that had seen all three innocent family members murdered in crossfire. The teenage boy, Abdul Hai, wrote, the Americans have big sunglasses like beetles, like robots. We look at strangers as guests in Iraq, as friends, and friends don't bring guns to talk to their other friends. They never smile and they're really intimidating as they pass through. They don't seem like rescuers at all. He continued, America has satellites which can read my license plate or tell which book I read as I sit on a park bench. They can buy the world three times over and bomb the world into oblivion eight times. But there's no way to win our hearts and minds but to drop from the ivory tower, look into our eyes, and shake our hands with respect and humanity. The older man, Munawar, 
lost his mother and sister in an explosion soon after becoming refugees. In his words, Afterward, I felt as a mule which follows a path with no will of their own, looking downward, only seeing the path a few paces in front of them. That is their only challenge. The time it takes to cover that ground is all the time in the world. Two weeks later, his father was shot dead. Caught in the middle of a firefight between American Marines and insurgents, Monauer felt that true freedom was choosing to stay with his stricken father, even when the consequences were detention and the loss of his physical freedom. He felt that if you do right and suffer, you will have God's approval. Still, Munauer felt a connection between grief and gratitude, writing, when I lack, I look for what has endured, my memory of you. Father, you taught that I can either be a sword or a lens through which others see and learn. Choose the sword and negotiations end. When Munauer showed me the envelope, that night he wanted me to know he was not merely Arabic or only a refugee or just a detainee. He was equally human. And he wondered what would happen if a room full of mothers, symphony composers, chefs, artists, and all those who create by taking distinct ingredients and blending them into a homogenous whole would be the ones who could negotiate peace. In his final entry, Munauer shared that he hoped to fill his life with curiosity and gratitude before extending it outward for two curious and grateful men find waging war against one another impossible. I was astounded by the beautiful sentiments in their letters that spoke of perseverance, gratitude, curiosity, and resilience. These letters were some of the most beautiful thoughts on life and love and the true cost of war that I had ever read. And they came from people who we suspected to be enemy combatants. Only it turns out they were never enemy combatants at all. I began to heal and feel more alive as I learned about these honorable men. I wasn't assigned an enemy, but a mentor. Through their stories and perspectives, I learned how to become human again. They were a healing elixir that helped me to heal and reunite with my family. And I asked myself, if there was one path to happiness, only one, and reuniting with my family hinged upon it, could I learn to respect and even mourn the loss of my worst enemy? In finding their humanity, I found my own. I'll never forget, and I hope you won't either, that two men filled with curiosity and gratitude find it impossible to wage war with one another. <laughs>